Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I've got six firearms laid out on the hood with an array of ammo. Today should be a good day. All right, guys, today we're going to talk about concealed carry. Like I showed you previously in the intro, we got six firearms we're going to talk about, ranging from 380 ACP all the way up to 45 auto. Uh, these are some of your more common pistols that people consider carrying. I know with everything going on, there's a lot of new gun buyers out in the world. We're just going to do a quick comparison video of all of them, talk about some of the pros and cons of each and some of the similarities. So it should be a good day. Let's do it. All right, let's start with the Ruger LCP2. As you can see, it's a very small, sleek, uh, subcompact style uh, sized gun. It's probably an inch thick, a little over three and a half, four inches tall, about five inches and over our length. Weighs a little over a pound loaded, maybe a little under a pound unloaded. These are just spitballing, uh, I'm just spitballing here. Don't quote me on any of those numbers. Let me show you that we are unloaded. The mag is loaded, but there's no round in the chamber. It doesn't have a magazine disconnect safety, so it will fire with the magazine out of the gun, which is nice. I know their SR series shipped with the magazine disconnect safety, which I'm not a fan of. The magazine is a six round, uh, 380 ACP single stack. So it only held six rounds. So you can get six plus one, so seven rounds in total in the gun. It only does ship with the one, which is a con. I wish it came with two. Speaking of the mag, when you insert it into the pistol, it has a little bit of a pinky extension right here. Even for somebody like me though, who has moderately large hands, you can't get a full grip on it, no matter what you do. I don't believe they make extended mags for these. I'm not sure about that. But right here, even with that pink extension, my pinky's hanging off. It's intended to be put in your pocket. Speaking of pocket, I do have a pocket holster right here somewhere. Here it is. It does ship with a pocket holster. So you just uh, insert it like that, throw it in your front pocket. The sights are pretty much garbage in my opinion. They are a black serrated rear with a black serrated front just milled into the slide. It's a very short sight radius, which makes it very difficult to get a rapid follow-up uh, rapid follow up shots, or even just basic accuracy beyond, like beyond seven yards. You're not gonna be very accurate with it. Even seven yards is pushing it for a gun of this size. I believe the barrel is only two and a quarter, two or three quarter inches long, something like that. So let's take a few shots with it, see what kind of grouping we can get, like I said, around seven yards. All right, guys, so I'm going to take seven steps away, roughly seven yards or so, and just see what kind of accuracy we can get out of the Ruger LCP2. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's see what kind of accuracy it is. Okay. Let's zoom in, see what kind of accuracy we got. All right, it's a little hard to see on camera, but uh, most of my shots were right here, low left. Uh, a couple shots flew off to the left on me. Uh, I was aiming right here, dead center, at the yellow target. But for a gun with a two inch barrel at seven yards, what can you expect? That's about as good accuracy as you can get. So let's switch off to something else and see if we can do something better than this. All right, up next is the Springfield 911. It's a 380 ACP single stack pistol, just like the Ruger LCP. It's about four inches tall, about five inches in overall length, maybe an inch width. Once again, I'm just spitballing here. Don't take my word for it. It ships with two magazines, which is much better than the Ruger. It comes with this flush fitting six round right here. If it's nice and flush, your pinky will hang off, very concealable. And it also ships with this uh, secondary magazine, which is also six rounds, so it doesn't hold any more capacity, but it does give you a little bit of an extension right there on the pinky. So as you can see, previously with the Ruger, even with the extension, my finger was hanging off. This one, I can get a full firing grip and not really give up a whole lot of concealability. Much better value. Speaking of value, this is double the price of the Ruger. 
so it's substantially more expensive. The Ruger is about 275, maybe 300 tops, depending where you shop. This one I just picked up two days ago for 550, so it's roughly $200 more. But for $200, you're getting G10 grips with G10 insert on the back strap, a G10 insert on the front strap, and the trigger itself is made out of G10. So. It's very nice, very high quality materials. It lets you get a nice proper purchase on the grip so you can get fast follow-up shots and better uh, recoil management. Also due to the fact that this one isn't polymer, it's aluminum with steel. It's basically a full-size 1911 shrunk down to accommodate a 380 ACP in a subcompact size. It's got a skeletonized and serrated hammer. It does come with manual ambidextrous safeties. The slide serrations on this are far better than the Ruger. They're much deeper cut. Let me show you that we are empty. There's no mag in the gun. And as you can see how much simpler and easier that is to rack that slide with those deep grooves. It doesn't have front cocking serration. So if you do want to do press checks, I wouldn't say it's more difficult because this slide is much easier to manipulate as you can see. It's got a loaded chamber indicator up top. I don't know if that, you can see that on camera. Uh, speaking of the slide, it does have night sights. So it's got a three dot night sight system. As you can see, it's got a nice big U notch in the back. From this angle, they look to be offset to the right. Anyways, they've got tritium inserts in the rear sight and in the front. It's got the white outline with the U notch, like I mentioned. The front is green outline with a tritium insert. So they're day and night sights. Uh, much, much better than the Ruger's milled sights. Uh, which allows for rapid follow-up shots and better accuracy. Let's take a few shots at about seven yards, same as the Ruger. So we're gonna take seven steps back like we did the Ruger and just see if we can get a better group with this. All right, guys, so once again, we're gonna take seven steps away from the target, roughly seven yards, 21 feet, and see what kind of group we can get with the Springfield 911. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. I'm going to aim for the top right bolt. All right, let's zoom in and take a closer look. All right, guys. Well, that was my first time actually shooting the 911. I just purchased it the other day. Much better than the Ruger LCP2. Again, it's a little hard to see on camera. I was aiming for this top right bolt right here. It looks like I'm more in line with it, but I'm still about two inches low. I got three shots right here. There's one there, one right below it, and one right here off to the side, a little bit lower. My other two shots went because I fired five, but I only see three right here. It might be these two below. I know I pulled low a little bit, so I might have missed the target completely. But since it was my first time shooting, definitely with those night sights, it's going to be a much more accurate gun once I get a little more trigger time behind it. Let's move on to the next pistol and keep going. All right, guys, we're stepping up on the ladder here. This is a six hour P365 chambered in nine millimeter. It's a 10 round double stack mag. It normally ships with a 10 round that has the pinky extension like I have here and a flush fitting 10 round mag. But due to COVID-19, six hour has limited it to one magazine per pistol. There is a website that I'll annotate right now in the video and put a link in the description below. If you purchase it, you go to that website they give you a discount code, fill out some information, and they'll send you your second 10 round magazine for free. Why they don't just include it in the box is beyond me. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, back to the pistol. Like I mentioned, it's 10 rounds. They do have a 12 and a 15 round magazine as well. The grip on this one, your pinky will hang off a little bit, just like the previous two pistols. The 10 round with the pinky extension, you get a perfect full firing grip right there which I haven't shot it just yet, but with that grip, I feel like it's gonna be a, a sweet shooter. Another thing we're gonna check on this fit, particular firearm is primer strike or prime striker drag, sorry, on the primer. Uh, I know that the first gens had problems with firing pins breaking and things like that because it would drag along the back of the primer. So we're gonna take a couple shots with this, pick up the brass and see if it's still doing that. It's supposed to be a gen three model, so they should have eliminated that problem safety concerns, we're gonna take a look at the brass. The grip is really nice. It's got nice stippling or texturing right here on the sides, as well as the back strap and the front strap. It's got a little bit of a finger groove right there, lets you get a nice high grip on the gun. 
Uh, the, the texturing continues down to the little base plate right here on the magazine. The serrations are much better than the Ruger. I hate to bash on Ruger so much today because I really do like their products, but the LCP2 serrations are just useless. Unlike the Rugers, these are very nice and deep. Makes for actuating that slide very, very easily. As well as the 911, that one had some nice deep serrations on the back. Makes for racking that slide super easy. This one comes with night sights. It's blacked out during the day, so as you can see, it's serrated and black, but you can kind of see the vitridium vials in the back. And up here on the front, it's got, similar to the Springfield, it's got a green outline with a tritium insert. So at day, that green is very easy to pick up in contrast to the black on the rear sights. But at night, they'll, the rear and the front will glow with tritium. So that's very nice. They're called the H3 X-ray sights. They're their own factory night sights. We'll do the same test, uh, seven steps back, roughly seven yards or so. And we'll just see what kind of group we can get out of the SIG. Let's do it. All right, once again, we're gonna take seven steps, roughly seven yards, and just see what kind of group we get out of the SIG. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, make sure we got one loaded and we're good to go. I keep riding that slide stop. That's something I'm gonna have to work on. All right, let's zoom in and see what we got. All right, guys, once again, it's pretty difficult to see on camera. This Walmart target's pretty much garbage. I'll have to get up a steel target or something to replace it. I was aiming for dead center. I hit three right here, pretty much vertical of each other on just left. One hit to the right. I'm not sure where my fifth shot went. It may have pulled real low. I know I saw it hit some dirt, so I might have just missed. Like I mentioned, it's the first time I shot that gun as well. But man, it's a sweet shooter. I can't wait to get some more trigger time behind it and get a little bit better at it. Let's pick up some brass, see if we can find some around here. Look at it to see if there was any striker drag. All right, guys. I found, I found two of the spent casings. There doesn't appear to be any striker drag on it. I don't know if it'll pick that up on camera, but definitely that's one and that's another one. But it looks like SIG has taken care of the problem and there's no longer a striker drag it at all. A nice, perfect center hit on the primer. That's what we like to see. All right, we're continuing on with the nine millimeters. This is the M&P Shield. It's a eight plus one with the extended mag, with the flush fit like this, it's seven plus one. This one has the biggest grip of all, in my opinion. Even with the flush fitting mag, I feel like I could at least get my pinky to stay on there just a little bit. With the eight plus one, it gives you a full firing grip, just like the Sig Sauer. This one, I'm not exactly sure the dimensions, but it's about four to four and a half inches tall, five to five and a half inches over length and a little over an inch thick. So roughly its dimensions are similar to the Sig Sauer, maybe slightly a little bit larger. What advantages do you get with the Spring or the Smith & Wesson that you don't get with the Sig Sauer? To be honest, not much. They're both very slim. They both have nice sights. These ones are just a three dot white sight. So they're not night sights. Point goes to the Sig on that and the Springfield, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Springfield 911 has night sights from the factory. So those two get a bonus point there. This one does have a loaded chamber indicator as well as the Springfield and the SIG and the, I don't know if the Ruger did, I didn't check. We'll have to double check that. But the Springfield had a loaded chamber indicator that went up. These, this has a window design just like the SIG. This one comes with a manual thumb safety. You can get them without, but if you prefer to have a manual thumb safety, it does come with one, it has an options. The slide serrations on this are very nice. I like the fish scale. It makes it very easy. The other three guns, even the Ruger, had a smoother slide, in my opinion. Like the action seemed a lot more refined and smoother. Like this one, just listen to it. I don't know, it just, to me, it sounds a little more gritty and it has a little more moving parts and just, just sounds clunky. The other ones were very smooth and easy to actuate. This is my wife's, uh, it was her primary carry, but she has very weak hands. And even with this, even with these nice serrations, she has a hard time racking that slide. And I gotta admit, it's not the easiest for me either because it's, even with those slide serrations, it's just so clunky. It feels like you have to do a lot of extra work to, you know, actuate the slide. The trigger on this compared to the SIG is garbage. 
I, I know a lot of people like this uh, Smith & Wesson trigger. We are unloaded, no magazine in the gun, pointed in a safe direction. The trigger on this, it's like a two piece trigger. It's split right there in the middle. Uh, it's like, it's just like the Glock. It's got the safety mechanism built into the trigger, I should say. So you really don't need to carry it with the manual safety. With the trigger, it's got the two piece pivoting system. So you can kind of see there's a little trigger stop right there. You pull the trigger, it clears that, a lot of creep, and then pretty clean break. The reset, pretty short, not the best in the world, but it's kind of a spongy, it's kind of got a spongy feel to it. And it does have a little bit of over travel where this uh, six hour had virtually no over travel that I could feel. The texturing on this is not great. It's very smooth. They did improve that in the 2.0 model, which I do plan on picking one up. If I can find one, they're almost impossible to find right now with everything going on. These Gen 1s have terrible grip in my opinion. They're very smooth. Not that they're not rigid or sturdy, but they're just a smooth grip. So it makes it a little easier to slip off. If my hands were wet, if I wasn't wearing gloves or something, I feel like I could slide off of this grip a little more. Maybe I'm just being biased because I love the SIG so much. This one's barrel is three point, uh, if I remember, it's like 3.1 inches in length, maybe 3.3. So it's a little bit longer barrel than the SIG, much longer than the two 380s that I showed you previously. So you're gonna get better accuracy and better uh, sight picture because the slide itself is longer. So you're gonna get a better sight picture. The sights, like I mentioned, are not uh, they're not night sights. They're just three dot white. So they're serrated with white dots in the back and a white dot up front All these guns so far except for the Ruger have dovetailed sights So you can swap the sights out which is nice. So if you don't like this you can get aftermarket night sights Let's take a couple shots with this one. See what kind of grouping we get I got a sticky target I can hang up so we can get a better idea where it's grouping. Let's do it Well not to sound too redundant, but once again, we're gonna take seven steps, so roughly seven yards, and see what kind of grouping we can get out of the Smith & Wesson m and Shield. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, let's see what kind of grouping we got. All right, guys, now that we got a sticky target, we can kind of see what we're hitting. With this one, I think I did the worst. I hit one low left, one I hit almost dead center, but the other three, I have no idea what happened. I've actually never shot that gun very well. My wife shoots it a lot better than I do. Like I said, I don't really like that slick grip. I'm just making excuses for being a bad shot at this point. Let's keep the test going and move on to another gun. All right, guys, we'll move up the ladder one more time to the 45 ACP. This is the Springfield XDS. It's a 3.3 inch model, so it's our subcompact pistol. It's six point something inches overall length, about four, four and a half inches tall. So it's the longest pistol, but it's about the same height as the other pistols I've shown you. About an inch, an inch and a quarter thick. The grip on this one is very, very aggressive. It's almost like an old World War II hand grenade on the front and back strap. It's got its pros and cons. Pros with that 45 ACP and a small pistol, it's, it could be snappy, but with that grip, it makes it very easy to control the recoil. The negatives is if you wear it on the inside waistband, it can chew up your skin. This one comes with three mags. I got one in my pocket. It's a five plus one, so you get six rounds of 45 ACP with a flush fitting mag. And it comes with two six plus ones with uh, extended base plates, which gives you six plus one, which is seven in total. And it gives you a full length grip. It's got three back straps, uh, small, medium, and large. So those are some pros for this gun. It's got, you know, three mags, three back straps, not a whole lot much more money than the other ones. In fact, it's cheaper than the Sig Sauer and the 911. So in 45 ACP for a gun that's cheaper, I mean, that's, that's a win. Uh, anyways, with the flush fitting mag, your pinky hangs off a little bit. It can hold on if you really, if you really want it to, you can get it to hold on there. But with the six plus ones, I just don't have them with me today. I forgot them. It gives you about a, a quarter of an inch, if not a in, half inch more grip. So it gives you a full length grip, which makes for shooting the 45 in this very, very sweet. Um, it's got a loaded chamber indicator right here. The serrations on this one are very, very aggressive on the slide, makes it for actuating that slide very easily. 
Now to compare it with the Smith, not to bash on the Smith, but like I said, that one's, it's chunky, clunk, like it's clunky sounding and it just doesn't feel very refined. Listen to this one. It just sounds more smooth in my opinion. Like they put a lot more care into building this pistol. And Springfields are known for well-built guns and it shows the sights on this one are a three dot. So it's got two white dots in the back and a red fiber optic up front, which is nice during the day. It picks up a lot of light. Even right now in the clouds, it's still very bright. I wish it was just a black, uh, black serrated rear. I might black out those white dots, but it gets the job done during the day. At night, it's not night sights. So it is a little harder to pick up. They are very nice sights nonetheless. Let's load up five rounds. We'll do the same thing. We'll take seven steps, seven yards, and get a grouping with this pistol as well. All right, guys, seven steps, seven yards, grouping with the XDS from 45. Let's see what we can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I adjusted my grip that time so the slide was able to lock open. All right, guys, as you can see, I was gonna shoot top left, but I ended up going for the top right bolt. I got two tar uh, two holes right here. One went way off to the right, and I think the other two went off to the right as well. That gun's pretty snappy. Not to say it's not manageable. Uh, once again, it's just me making excuses for being a bad shooter. <laughs> um, the 380 and the nine millimeter holes are very, very small as you can kind of see on, tar on camera. The 45s pack quite a punch. They make a much bigger hole in the target. I don't want to say knockdown power is real or not real. That's a topic up for debate, but the 45 definitely hits with more authority. It has a lot more kinetic energy, I guess you would say, down range. And as you saw from the previous shooting video, it knocks this target around quite a bit. Well, with that, let's move on to the final gun and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, last but not least is the Rock Island Armory TAC Ultra Full-Size 1911, chambered in 45 ACP. This gun right here, five and a half inch grip. It's 8.7 inches in length, so it's the biggest gun here. It's got forward and rear cocking serrations that are nice and deep, makes it easy for press checks or racking that slide. G10 grips, similar to the 911 on the Springfield. Uh, this one's got a nice cutout for your thumb to actuate that thumb uh, magazine release, I should say. It's got 20 lines per inch checkering on the back. Some nice lines on the front of the grip. Makes for a very easy shooting and very comfortable shooting pistol. It's very heavy. It's like 38 ounces uh, unloaded and like 42 ounces loaded, something like that. It's got the full Picatinny rail. It's got a front fiber optic sight and a white uh, two dot sight in the back that are adjustable for windage and elevation. I did a previous video on this gun. If you want to go check it out, it's uh, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But it does normally have white dots in the back, but I hack jobbed it with a with a sharpie and blacked it out. That front red fiber optic is right there for you. Like I mentioned, it's very heavy. It is the largest gun here. It's chambered in 45 ACP. It's got a skeletonized and serrated hammer skeletonized and a serrated trigger with a, a uh, over travel adjustment screw it's rated to four to six pound trigger pull uh, extended beaver tail grip safety it's the full five inch length rail so like i mentioned it's the biggest it's the heaviest but all that combined with eight rounds of 45 eight plus one makes for a very very easy to shoot firearm very accurate as well because you've got that longer sight radius and that longer barrel it means you're getting better velocity not to mention you get eight rounds of 45, so you can't really argue there. The Rock Island, specifically this one, ships with only one eight round mag. I have purchased a Pro Mag. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this. As I mentioned, I did a previous video on it. So let's just take a couple shots. We're gonna do the same thing, seven yards, take it seven steps. We're gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this. All right, guys, same concept. We're gonna take seven steps, seven yards, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of the full length 1911 from Rock Island Armory. We got one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Here we go. Woo. You see that knockdown power? I know I said it doesn't exist in the last gun, but you can't argue the power of a 45. All right, let's zoom in and take a look. All right, with this gun, I'm able to get a much tighter group. I was actually aiming for the top left and I was hitting the top left. 
So my first one, there's a little bit of copper jacketing still left inside of it. That's kind of cool. Like I said, I was aiming for the top left by the bolt. My first one hit low. My second one hit right under it. Uh, third one is kind of in a vertical line. I was shooting lower as I was getting faster with it. But it's definitely more accurate. I was shooting left and it was aiming left the whole way. If I took my time, I could probably get a much tighter group than that. But I'm very happy with that group. And that's the benefits with shooting something like this. I don't recommend this as a first time carry because it's got the manual safety. It's so large, it's got the beaver tail grip safety. There's a lot to learn on a 1911 and yet there's not a lot to learn, if that makes sense. They're very simple, but very, very complex at the same time. We'll wrap this video up and I'll give you a conclusion and a comparison of all these firearms side by side. Hey guys, I want to apologize if there's been a lot of wind noise. I swear I'm going to invest in a microphone one of these days, but for now this is all I've got. So I hope you can hear me throughout the video. Uh, anyways, let's take a quick recap and compare some of the pros and cons and similarities of the micro subcompact pistols or mouse guns. And then we'll talk about the subcompacts or the mid sizes, and then we'll go over what it means to carry a full size 1911. All right, as you can see, I've got the Springfield 911 in my right hand. I've got the Ruger LCP2 in my left. They're both 380 ACP, six plus one, so they hold the same amount of rounds. They're both chambered in the same caliber. Uh, Thickness is roughly the same, about an inch on both. I think the Springfield and the Ruger come in just under an inch in thickness. Uh, height right now, there's not a magazine inserted in either, uh, either of the guns. If I can line it up for you here on camera, height would go to the Ruger just ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see that, but the Ruger is maybe an eighth of an inch shorter. Overall length, if you compare it from the back strap, the uh, beaver tail I should say, to the back of the Ruger, the Ruger is slightly shorter. So overall, it's a smaller pistol, a little bit lighter weight coming in at about 15 ounces unloaded. The Springfield 911 comes in around 17 ounces unloaded, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, negatives for this are the serration. If you're in a wet conditions or muddy condition or something, they're probably gonna be almost useless. They're very slick and they're not very pronounced on the slide. Also the sights, are just milled in they're not great this gun is best used at maybe three to five yards tops the trigger though is actually quite nice i don't remember mentioning it before very very light trigger the reset it's kind of long it's not very tactile it's pretty quiet so it's not the greatest reset but that trigger pull is very nice big big pro for the ruger lcp2 is the price 285 dollars I think before tax is like 250, 260 something right now. So they're very, very cheap, very lightweight. They're considered mouse guns, like I said. This isn't the one made for it, but you can throw it in a pocket holster as such and just throw it in your pocket. That's the Ruger LCP. Comparing it to the 911, it's like I mentioned, roughly the same size. The Ruger is a little bit smaller. This one's aluminum versus polymer. It's got an aluminum frame with a steel slide. It's got nice sights, so that's a big, big pro night sights from the factory. The serrations are far better than the Ruger's. Um, if you're into 1911, you just know that you want a manual safety, then this is the gun for you. Don't overlook something like this or the Ruger LCP if you're looking for a small concealed carry gun. Uh, the differences are obviously it's got a manual safety and this one's hammer fired, so it's a single fire, much like a full size 1911 where the Ruger is a striker fire pistol. This one has G10 grips. It's got G10 inserts on the back and the front, like I've mentioned. It ships with two mags. It's got the flush fitting and then it's got this extended one that gives you a full grip. So that's a huge pro where the Ruger only ships with the one. Um, another pro to this versus the Ruger, I would say overall build quality. They make some very, very nice handguns. The only negative I can really say to this compared to the Ruger is the price. This is double in price than the Ruger. The Ruger, you can pick up two of these for the same price as this. And you might even get two of these and a box of ammo. This is about 560 after tax. So you get one Ruger, five boxes of ammo and get good with that or spend the money on a better firearm and practice with this where you'll probably be more proficient in this than you would with the Ruger in a shorter amount of time. Another negative, if you're not into manual safeties, it does have a manual safety. Unless it's a 1911, I don't like manual safeties. But for you new shooters, you know, manual safety is always nice. So that's the micro compacts. Let's take a look at the mid sizes. The first two I'm going to show you is the Spring or uh, Smith and Wesson MP Shield versus the Six Hour P365. They're both nine millimeter. This one is a 
single stack. It's seven plus one and it comes with an eight plus one in the box. Uh, it's got a nice grip. It's a little slick. The 2.0 solved that. The magazine release is easy to actuate. Looks mags drop free. It does have a manual safety. So it, it is my wife's and she prefers manual safeties, but they do come without. The slide serrations on this one are really nice. That fish scale makes it very easy to actuate the slide. Pros of this over the SIG is price as well. This one comes in about 100, um, yeah, about 100, $200 cheaper than the SIG. I'm not saying that the SIG or this, either one's better than the other, but if you're on a budget, same with the micros, you'd go with the Ruger if you're going for a micro, and if you're on a budget looking for a single, I would go for the Smith & Wesson 9. Uh, MP9 uh, shield, sorry, because of price. You can get one of these and a couple boxes of ammo and get really good with this. This is not a hard gun to shoot. I personally don't shoot it well, but I know many, many people who carry it and shoot it just fine. Um, another positive of it, the trigger's not bad. It's a little spongy, but it's not bad. But there's tons of aftermarket parts for this gun. You got the Apex trigger system. I mean, a lot of people will mill down and do lightning cuts in the slide, aftermarket sights, um, you name it. You can remove the manual safety if you have one with a manual safety, no problem. Some of the cons of it are, it's a little clunky. I, I mentioned it before, but it's got that like gritty feeling to it when you wrap the slide. Not that it's not well built, but compared to SIG or something like that, it's just, it's clunky. So it gets the job done, it'll feed anything you put in it, and it's nine millimeter. And we all know a nine's kind of the standard right now. Back to the cons. It's six or seven plus one, and with an extend mag, it's eight plus one, which is two to three rounds less than the uh, SIG. The pros to this gun, the sights are great, even though they're just a three dot sight, they are dovetailed, so you can you can remove them and replace them. Like I said, plenty of aftermarket, but the three dot system's really great. It's got a longer sight radius than the SIG, but it can have the potential to be more accurate. The SIG, side by side, and the SIG has its mag in there, the Smith doesn't. If you line it up from the back of the slide, the SIG is significantly shorter. It's, well, not significant. It's about an eighth of an inch, maybe half an inch shorter in the slide. This SIG is shorter and it has the mag in. So it, well, it's about even with the mag in. With the mag out or the flush fitting mag that you're supposed to get, it makes it a little bit shorter than, it, than the MP shield. The pros, it's a 10 plus one. So you get 11 shots. It comes with two mags. Originally, like I mentioned with coronavirus and everything, they only ship one now uh, with. I can't really tell on camera or in person. I would say they're virtually identical. Maybe one's a little thicker than the other, but really it's marginal if it is. It feels more balanced with this one than it does. This one feels front heavy. It feels like it wants to tip forward in my hand. This one feels a little more well balanced. The pros of this one, it's got the Tritium Night Sights from Factory. The serrations on this, I'd say they're a little bit better than the Smith & Wesson just because they're they're deeper cut, easier to access. Not to mention you get front cocking serrations. The M&P 2.0, they have front cocking serrations as well. So it's not really a fair comparison. This one's about 150, 200 something dollars more. So that's a con. It didn't come with its second mag. That's not a con on the gun, that's more SIG for being weird. I don't know why they don't just send it. If they're gonna mail it to you for free anyways, why not just put it in the box? That's real weird to me. The grip is better on this. You get a full grip with the, and you get 10 rounds. When you put the extended mag in, it's a little longer than the SIG is. So the SIG is definitely more concealable in my opinion. If I had to choose, I'd choose this just because of the size and the capacity and the sights. I'm not saying the shield's bad. Like I said, it's been around a while. Not knocking it at all, but if it was up to me, I'd go with the SIG. If I had to choose out of these two, I'd choose the 911 just for the features it has, the grip, the serrations, and the sights. I'm not saying that the Ruger's a bad gun either. I know people own that. Clearly I own it and it's a great gun. If you only had the money to buy one, I would go with the 911 and in the midsize, I would go with the Sauer. Let's take a look at kind of, it's kind of like in that weird ballpark. It's a single stack, the XDS chambered in 45 ACP. It's a single stack. It's about the same size as the Smith & Wesson. It might just be a hair longer, a little bit fatter, and it's actually a little bit shorter as well. Why I say this is kind of an oddball, it is single stack, which is great. It's chambered 45, which is an awesome round. I wouldn't say it's a good first carry gun because of the caliber. They do make it in a nine millimeter, which 
I'm assuming it's great to shoot because this one's pretty soft shooting for 45. Uh, the pros of this gun, this one is about the same price as the Smith, maybe a little bit more. This one ships with three mags, three back straps. It's got really deep serrations, nice fiber optic front sight and the white rear dot. The trigger on this, it does have the grip safety like I mentioned. It's nice and crisp. If I had to choose this over those two, I wouldn't. But for a first carry gun or an only carry gun, 45 is not the way to go. It can hurt your hand a little bit because of that aggressive texturing, not gonna lie. It's roughly $500, so it's in between the SIG and the Smith. All right, that's it for the mid size. so let's move on to the final gun, the full size 1911. All right, guys, so here's the 1911. You can't go wrong with a 1911. Now, I'm not saying it's a good choice for a first carry gun, but if you get more comfortable and you get more practice and everything, and you've got the money and time to spend, you definitely go with a 1911. The original 1911 is 45, five inch government model. If you go with a 1911, that's what I recommend. The Commander model, the 4.25 inch, I believe they are, was originally chambered a nine millimeter and has more capacity than something like this. The 1911, the reason I say it's not the great first carry gun is because there's a lot to learn on a 1911. I mean, it's got the hammer, it's got the manual safeties. The biggest negatives to it, obviously, are its size. It's very heavy. Like I mentioned before, it's about 40 ounces loaded, 42 ounces somewhere in that ballpark. It's five inch barrel, so it is very accurate. That's a pro. The sight radius is very long, so that's a pro. It's got rear adjustable sights with a fiber optic front. Now that's not to say every 1911 does, but this one particular does. So that's a pro. The grips are G10, another pro. I mean, you get a full size grip. They are accurate. They're gonna be far more accurate and more pleasant to shoot than any subcompact polymer, in my opinion. This is that mid-range gun right now, the Rock Island Armory, it's their tax series. It's got all the bells and whistles. This, if you're gonna carry a 1911, this is the setup I recommend. You got the uh, cocking serrations, you got eight plus one, very slim. Let's compare it to the, the XD because they're both 45. Roughly the same width, you're getting a lot more sight radius. You're getting the same caliber. So, I mean, if you're one of the guys who carry a backup gun, you, if you carry a 1911 for your primary, carry this for your secondary. Nine millimeter is nothing to slouch at, neither is 380, but for something about a 45, man, I tell you, it's just, it's a pleasure to shoot, especially in a package like this. Do I recommend this as your first carry gun? No. Do I recommend that you buy one and enjoy the hell out of it? Yes. If you don't own a 1911, I recommend you do, or at least borrow one of your friends to shoot. These are just like the Cadillac of firearms. Even something like this at a, at a mid $600 range, 700. It's, it's the Cadillac of firearms, man. Hey, if you were to pick any of these six, I'd go with the SIG. It's got the best of all, all of these firearms. What I mean by it's got the best, it's got the high capacity, so 10 plus one, and like I mentioned, it comes with two mags. It also has the 12 plus one and a 15 plus one extension, so you get a lot of ammo capacity in a very small, slim package. Nine millimeter, which is a great mid-range like caliber that everybody's using nowadays. Nine is usually easy to find. It's got the nice night sights, so it's got the same sights as your micro. It's got a nice, decent sight radius. It's got nice, deep side serrations. It's at mid price, like 500 bucks. You can probably find it 450 right now. Great trigger. They say it's a six to seven pound trigger online. I bet you it pulls around four and a half pounds. So if you only have money for one carry gun out of everything I showed you, go with the P365. Guys, I want to thank you for stopping by again and watching my videos. Uh, for any of you out there who are suffering or know somebody suffering of COVID-19 right now, uh, I send my thoughts and prayers to you and your family. If you're a health worker or a retail worker, my thoughts are with, and prayers are with you as well. You guys are the backbone and the heroes right now. We appreciate everything you're doing, and together we're going to get through this. Thanks again, and have a great night.